Hello, my name is Kyung Jin Lee from Seoul National University. In this video, I'd like to introduce our system Groot, which is a real-time streaming system for high-fidelity volumetric videos. This is a joint work with my colleague Ju Wan Yi and my supervisors, Professor Yang Gi Lee, Song Yun Che, and Professor Yang Min Kim. Let me start with showing you a demo of Groot. Volumetric video is considered as the next generation multimedia. It is represented by 3D data so that the user can move around in six degrees of freedom to view the content from any position. Volumetric videos can be conveniently played on our smartphone devices with the recent development of augmented reality and virtual reality technologies. This can enable numerous applications such as telepresence, free viewpoint sports games, or performances. So for the users to move in six degrees of freedom, the devices should be fully mobile without being constrained by the wires. Then the volumetric videos residing at the server have to be delivered through the wireless network to the client's device. Since the content is generated in 30 FPS, a typical video frame rate, the frame update rate at the client should also meet 30 FPS. On top of that, for the users to really feel that the content is in 3D, the motion to photo latency for rendering should remain below 20 milliseconds. To be able to meet this requirement, we have multiple challenges to tackle. The first challenge is a large data size. One of the most popular representation of volumetric video is point clouds, which is simply a set of points. So each point is represented by its XYZ coordinates and some attributes such as color. Since the coordinate needs four by each and one by each for the color information, we need at least 15 bytes to represent a single point. According to some of the state-of-the-art volumetric videos, such as the ones shown here, the typical number of points in a volumetric video frame ranges from 300K to 1 million points, which requires 1 to 3 gigabps of bandwidth to stream them over the wireless network. Due to the large data size of point clouds, compression becomes crucial. We note that we need both geometry and color compression for point clouds, whereas 2D videos only require the compression of colors. There are multiple state-of-the-art popular compression libraries, such as Google Drago and Point Cloud Library. However, those libraries could not be adopted to the streaming system, mainly because of the slow decoding speed, even on the latest commodity smartphones, such as the iPhone XS. Specifically, we tested the mobile version of Draco, and it only achieved the decoding rate of 2 to 4 FPS. We tried to divide the content into several blocks and applied multi-threading, but it could only reach 4 to 10 FPS. In the case of Point Cloud Library, since it does not provide the mobile version, we re-implemented the core functions with other acceleration techniques like SIND for fast vector calculation, but it could still only achieve 10 to 20 FPS. Another challenge we came upon was the low color compression rate. Google Draco and Point Cloud Library both focuses mainly on compressing the geometry, which could reduce the data size by six to eight times. However, for color compression, the data size was reduced by only 1.5 times, which dropped the overall compression rate to 3 to 4. So to tackle the challenges mentioned earlier, we present Groot, which consists of three distinct technologies. First, we leverage the mobile GPUs for integrated parallel decoding and rendering to overcome the slow decoding speed and meet both the frame rate and the motion to photon latency. Next, we propose a novel color compression scheme, which can improve the compression rate to reduce the data size while preserving the perceptual quality. Lastly, to further reduce the computing complexity on the mobile device, as well as the network bandwidth, we show that interactive user view adaptation techniques can be applied in real time. So let's first start with the integrated parallel decoder and render. We first started by looking further into the conventional compression schemes to identify the decoding process's bottleneck. The logic behind the compression algorithm of Google Draco and Point Cloud Library is to use 3D tree data structures such as Oaktree 
to compress the geometry and information. This diagram shows an example of the data structure. Octree recursively divides the space into eight equal sized cubes until the node contains only a single point. But only the non-empty nodes are further divided and the empty nodes can be neglected. Each node can be represented by eight bits, the occupancy byte, where each bit represents if the child node is empty or not. So with the root node position and the occupancy byte, we can recursively calculate the child node position until we reach near the original XYZ coordinate. If we concatenate these occupancy bytes in breadth first order, we can obtain the compressed representation of the geometry information of point cloud. The decoding process, which is to regenerate the original XYZ coordinates from the encoded occupancy bytes, cannot be executed in parallel for each point because the octree generates a dependency between the points. For example, this is an octree with three depths and the encoded occupancy byte stream is as below. Let's try to find the points under node 6. We first have to know the position of node 6, and from this encoded byte stream, we have to find the occupancy byte of node 6. So we start from the root node and figure out that there are two child nodes, node 1 and 2, and calculate their positions. Now we have four bytes left, and to know which byte is for node 6, we first have to figure out from node one that the first two bytes are for its child nodes. After that, we finally know that node two's child nodes comes next and node six is the last one. So in short, the process of finding the position of the points under node six is dependent to the number of nodes that comes before, which makes parallel processing difficult. This was a very simple example, but we observed that when the tree goes deeper and the number of nodes gets bigger, the latency increases significantly. This graph shows the cumulative distribution function of the decoding latency as the oak tree depth goes deeper. We can see that the latency mainly resides in the last two to three depths, generating a bottleneck in the decoding process. This observation gives us an insight to design a new compression scheme by modifying the data structure to generate the parallel decodable tree, PD tree. Since the latency resides in the last few depths, we first cut the oak tree before the last two to three depths. And for the top part, we use the conventional oak tree data structure to effectively compress the spatial information. Then for the rest of the tree levels from the maximum breadth depth and below, we represent them individually in depth first order and name it oak tree depth bytes ODB. This hybrid representation brings us multiple advantages. First, we can still leverage the oak tree data structure to compress the 3D data, but it can break the dependency between the points with individual representation like the original raw point clouds for parallel decoding. On top of that, we can easily remove or reorder the points without having to decode the entire compressed byte stream. Now that there is no dependency between the compressed points, we can enable fast parallel decoding leveraging mobile GPUs. However, the challenge here is that the GPU is already extensively used for the rendering job, which runs periodically in 60 FPS to meet the motion to photo latency. So normally to render point clouds, we have a list of XYZ and RGB values, and the GPU handles each point in parallel using the vertex shader to project the points onto the screen and the fragment shader to give them some color. To leverage the GPU for decoding while not bothering this rendering job, we first divide the task between the CPU and GPU. So we decode the oak tree breath bytes and color bytes on the CPU since the latency was negligible. Then the remaining decoding job for the individually represented oak tree depth bytes is integrated into the same GPU kernel function for rendering. So the input to the rendering pipeline is now the decoded oak tree breadth bytes and the still encoded oak tree depth bytes and the decoded color bytes. Then within the same vertex shader for rendering, 
we apply the decoding function first, which calculates the final XYZ coordinates. Then it's rendered on the screen following the conventional pipeline. So with the integrated module, the decoding and rendering does not have to be synchronized explicitly. And also the overhead of decoding is minimized. Next, we present our novel color compression scheme. Since the points are organized with a PD tree data structure, a dozen points in the encoded stream mostly have similar colors already. To remove the redundancy of these color information, we can use the conventional 2D image compression techniques like JPEG by packing the colors into a 2D image. For example, with the colors of a frame from the long dress dataset, a naive method would be to pack the colors in serial order but since JPEG compresses the data in a unit of blocks like 8x8 pixels, the colors within the block are quite random, which limits the compression rate and mixes the colors up. So instead, we use the Morton ordering, which packs the color following the Z-shape order to maximize the locality of similar colors within the same compression block. As you can see on the right, the colors within the same block are much more similar. But even after localizing the similar colors with Morton ordering, when we look closer to how the pixels are ordered, a JSON point still has some color difference. Since the PDG architecture allowed the points to be reordered without having to change anything in the encoding and decoding process, we could sort the colors once more to preserve these details and maintain the perceptual quality. Lastly, we could further improve the decoding rate and reduce the network bandwidth consumption by applying interactive and continuous user view adaptive optimizations. Again, the big advantage of PD3 is that its parallel representation allows removing and reordering the points directly from the encoded byte stream without having to change anything in the decoding process. So we can apply straightforward view adaptive techniques in real time to further reduce the network bandwidth, as well as the complexity of decoding on resource constrained mobile devices. In this work, we use these two adaptation techniques. First, fast frustum culling, which removes the points that are not shown in current user's view, and depth-based sampling, which allocates higher resolution to closer objects and lower resolution to far objects. Please refer to our paper for more details on this. So finally, when we put all our components together, we first generate the PD tree in the offline stage since this process is not affected by the user's current viewpoint. Then during runtime, receive the user's viewpoint and directly apply frustum culling and depth-based sampling in real time and send it to the client. The client device will decode the oak tree breath bytes and color bytes on the CPU and send it straight to the GPU where the integrated decoding and rendering happens. So we now show you the evaluation results of our system, mainly answering the following three questions. Can we achieve 30 FPS frame rate with Groot? And what is the compression rate and its quality? And how fast and effective is interactive user view adaptation? The setup for our evaluation is as follows. We used the four data sets, which is 300K to 1 million points, and tested using 802.11ac Wi-Fi on iPhone XS. And for comparison, we used the optimized mobile version of Draco and Point Cloud Library as baseline systems. First of all, this graph shows the frame update rate, which includes receiving the frame through the wireless network, decoding, and rendering them on the device for different data sets. It shows that our system can achieve 30 FPS frame update rate for all data sets. For smaller data sets like the band, we could reach up to 60 FPS. Next, we show you the latency breakdown results with minimum, average, and maximum values for each component. The result shows that decoding is no longer the bottleneck and the rendering latency remain way below the motion to photo latency of 20 milliseconds. These two results prove that Groot can achieve the system requirements that we mentioned earlier in the video. Also, we want to mention that there is still room for improvement to handle the fluctuation in the network latency. 
Next, we show the compression performance compared to the baseline systems. And overall, we could reduce the data size per frame by up to two times. And especially with our color compression scheme, we could reduce the data size of color information by five times. Although we did not include the results in this video, the perceptual quality of groups remained high even with the higher compression rate. Please refer to our paper for specific results. And here we show how Groot maintains the perceptual quality even with the higher compression rate with Morton ordering and sorting the colors. For our left the image shows the rendered result of the original point cloud of the longest dataset. And the middle image shows the results when we apply JPEG compression after serial packing the color. You can see that the colors of the hand and the shoulders was not preserved and mixed with the blue color of the dress. The far right image shows a result of Groot, which applied Morton ordered packing and sorting. It shows that the color details were well preserved with near identical perceptual quality as the original content. Lastly, we show the performance of our interactive view adaptation. Each bar graph shows the latency of applying culling, sampling, and encoding in milliseconds at the server. The encoding re refers to re-encoding the color bytes after applying culling and sampling. The results shows that all components in total can be applied in real time at the server to adapt to the dynamic viewpoint changes of the user. And furthermore, we can save the network bandwidth by up to two times. This graph is a box plot of the bit rate comparing Groot without user view adaptation, Groot with Frustum culling only, and Groot with both Frustum culling and depth space sampling. The results are not shown here, but we inform you that the perceptual quality remained consistent. So before we end this video, we would like to touch upon some discussion points. First, there is an ongoing standardization activity by MPEG VPCC for point cloud compression. The core idea is to separate the 3D content into small sized patches based on their normal values to project them individually on a 2D frame and use conventional 2D video codecs. It has the advantage of leveraging high performance video codecs to achieve a high compression rate, but we have not considered this approach in our current work since it still suffers from some limitations. The process of calculating the normal and generating patches is complicated, resulting in a slow encoding rate, which takes up to 42 minutes for 30 frames. And it could not encode generic point clouds with multiple people and objects, or the ones that could not generate a smooth texture. However, since it has a strong advantage of using conventional 2D video codecs for high compression rates, it will be a promising research direction to further explore this technique for streaming systems. Also, volumetric videos with more number of points would require a larger network bandwidth. So adopting new wireless technology like 5G and Wi-Fi 6 would be helpful. In the same context, the compression rate should be further improved. Here, we can apply inter-frame compression and even video content adaptations such as using the CLC. Lastly, in this work, we used conventional perceptual quality metrics for 2D videos since there were limited studies on the perceptual quality of 3D data. So it will be very important to develop adequate metrics by conducting further real-world user studies. So in summary, Groot is a volumetric video streaming system which enables 30 FPS frame rate on mobile devices. We could achieve this by a, a PD tree enabled fast parallel decoding with mobile GPUs, and an improved color compression rate by five times while maintaining the perceptual quality by localizing and storing the colors. And lastly, we could further optimize the system by enabling interactive and continuous user view adaptation. So this is the end of our video introducing Groot. Please go ahead and check out our paper for further details and evaluation results. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through this email. Thank you for listening and have a great day.